This is podcast number 26. We've been talking about duplicating DNA, and the next step in our discussion is to talk about transcription and then translation after that. This is all part of the central dogma. This is one of the fundamental deals that, ideas that cuts across all, almost all of biology, and this is the idea that DNA codes for RNA, RNA codes for uh, protein. This is the this idea you can see in all aspects of um, biology. Uh, the details, of course, are what we're going to be concerned with. Um, just to remind you, uh, DNA, any two nucleic acids actually, when they bind uh, to each other or hybridize, are in an anti-parallel orientation in that the five prime end of one strand is going to be bound to the three prime end of another strand in an anti-parallel direction. So this is two DNA strands, but if it was DNA and RNA, it would be the same thing. And anytime you bind another strand, it's again anti-parallel. So this is five prime to three prime, and the strand it binds to is three prime to five prime, left to right, and then the strand it uh, synthesizes is five prime to three prime, um, left to right. This, uh, in double-stranded DNA, the five prime to three prime strand is called the anti-template or sense strand. Those terms are used inter interchangeably. The three prime to five prime strand is called the template or also the anti-sense strand. This is called the template because it acts as the template for transcription and transcription will be five prime to three prime left to right. Now there isn't really a left to right in the cell. Of course, these are all tumbling all over the, each other. But in terms of polarity to the molecule, there is. And there is a five prime N and a three prime N. And the messenger RNA starts um, on the five prime N and the first codons that code for uh, nucleic acids are on the five prime end, not directly on the five prime end, but toward the five prime end. So it's these sorts of terms and orientation have to become second nature for you to figure out what we're going to talk about next. The uh, idea that uh, DNA codes for RNA, and then within that RNA there's a triplet code called the codon. Those code for amino acids. Uh, this triplet code is redundant. Um, another word for that is degenerate. That means that more than one triplet code can code for the same amino acid. So here you see both UUU and UUC code for phenylalanine. Leucine is coded for by six nucleotides, UUA, UUG, CUU, CUC, CUA, CUG. That is the most redundant. Some nucleic acids are coded for by a single uh, codon, such as methionine. Where is methionine on here? There it is, right there. Tryptophan, there's another one. UGG, right here. Uh, but most have multiple nucleotides that uh, are multiple codons that code for one amino acid. Every three letter uh, combination of A, G, C, or U codes for something. So every single possible way that you can put together A, C, G, and U in a three letter code codes for something, either a uh, amino acid or it may be a stop codon. Um, this table here is almost the same table for everything on Earth. There are some exceptions, um, and I'll talk about those in a second, but almost everything on Earth uses this table, even viruses. So this uh, more evidence of the uh, common origin of life on Earth in that everything uses the same codon table. So the exceptions are mitochondria, uh, UGA, 
uh, codes for tryptophan in uh, vertebrates um, and AGA and AGG codes for stop codon um, in inverts uh, in mitochondria UGA codes for tryptophan and AGA and AGG code for serine in yeast UGA codes for tryptophan but CU a, CUU, CUC, CUG codes for threonine, and protist UGA codes for tryptophan. If we look here, uh, UGA is a stop codon. So what is normally a stop codon in mitochondria in these taxa codes for tryptophan instead of a stop codon. And in the nucleus in bacteria, GUG, UUG, AUU, and CUG can be an initiation codon, whereas in um, most organisms, AUG is the initiation codon, and etc. You get the idea. There's also a rare 21st amino acid. We always talk about 20 amino acids, but there is a rare 21st amino acid, which is selenocysteine. It's coded for by UGA. Okay, um, when the uh, mRNA is fully processed after it's been transcribed and then the transcript has been modified on both its 5' prime and 3' prime end and the introns are cut out, the, once the first codon is found, and we'll go over this in detail, uh, the codons are read three at a time. Um, and that three at a time is called the reading frame. It's like a moving frame that is three nucleotides long, and that moving frame is the ribosome that's reading three nucleotides at a time. So, such that if you insert an extra nucleotide in there, or you subtract a nucleotide in there, it's going to be out of frame, that's called a frame shift mutation, such that the rest of the sequence is unlikely to make sense. This is how CRISPR works, in that if you induce a mutation uh, that causes non-homologous end joining, you're going to cut off some of those base pairs and replace some of those base pairs. It's likely you will lead to a frame shift, and that is likely that will stop um, the sequence from being read. So instead of A's, C's, G's, and U's, let's just uh, think about these as words. And if we have our wild type sequence, the sequence that actually codes for something, uh, you can think of it as a sentence made out of um, three letter words. Our big red dog bit the old man. Okay, not great literature, but at least it makes sense. Now, if we have a mutation that adds in just one nucleotide um, here, uh, then it's the ribosome is still going to read three nucleotides at a time, and the first word makes sense, but every word after that does not make sense. Uh, same thing is if you subtract just one nucleotide. Um, uh, again, uh, the first one would make sense, and then after that subtraction, nothing makes sense. You can have two mutations where you add one and take out another, in which case only one codon would be messed up. And then every possible um, combination of mutations after that. So these are called frame shift mutations, and they tend to be um, knockout mutations in that the organism can no longer make this transcript. Uh, prokaryotes over here, by definition, this prokaryote before it adds to a nucleus, there is no nucleus, and transcription and translation are not physically separated or separated in time. So as something is being transcribed, it can be translated even before it's being done being transcribed. Whereas in eukaryotes, uh, transcription happens, then the RNA is processed, and the RNA uh, has to be fully processed before it leaves the nucleus. Ribosomes are outside the nucleus, and so you have 
a spatial separation between transcription and translation, and also time. This has to happen before this happens, whereas in prokaryotes, both can happen at the same time. There are some hypotheses that say this is why, one of the reasons why, one why, as to why eukaryotes have introns and prokaryotes tend to not have introns is because uh, because you have introns, you have to have that processing step where you cut them out. So you separate out both physically, um, uh, because one's happening in the nucleus and uh, translation is happening outside the nucleus. You separate out transcription and translation. Um, and then you also get the benefit of um, putting different exons together by, by having introns, uh, whereas uh, prokaryotes don't have that option. Here's an example of uh, in a prokaryote. Here is a transcript, an mRNA transcript. Uh, I'm sorry, this is DNA uh, as the template. The transcripts are coming off at a right angle on that, and the little dots on the transcripts are ribosomes. So as uh, a transcript is being made, uh, multiple ribosomes are on that transcript already translating it. And this, this is um, sort of a timeline in that this transcript is the oldest, it's the longest. These are next oldest, they're next longest. These are the youngest up here because they're just, these transcripts are just starting. But even in transcripts that just start, they get um, ribosomes attached to them uh, right away. There are uh, also special cases with viruses um, and a special kind of family of viruses called retroviruses where there is an RNA genome and that RNA genome gets reverse transcribed into DNA and then that DNA gets incorporated into the host genome. So RNA is the genome of the retrovirus as the retrovirus enters the cell, that RNA gets reverse transcribed into DNA. Reverse transcriptase is, an, is a viral protein that converts RNA into DNA. It is not part of a normal cell cycle. It's just uh, part of a viral infection. And then um, that DNA, which was originally RNA from this virus, can then incorporate into the cell's nucleus. Okay, um, HIV is a retrovirus, but SARS-CoV-2, the the virus that causes coronavirus, uh, COVID-19, uh, is not a retrovirus. It does not have reverse transcriptase, and there's no genome integration. So even though SARS-CoV-2 has an RNA genome, it's mRNA, and it does not go through reverse transcriptase. Uh, reverse transcription or um, DNA integration um, as part of its infectious cycle. There are um, genetic elements called retrotransposons. Um, they are part of genomic DNA. They can cut code for their own endonuclease. Endonuclease would be an enzyme that would cut the retroposon out of the genomic DNA and code for either for their own reverse transcriptase or use um, reverse transcriptase from another retrotransposon. Uh, um, and then uh, um, they can incorporate themselves in a new place in the uh, genome. Uh, there is a large part of the human genome known as ALU repeats. Uh, ALU repeats are retrotransposons that code for their own endonuclease and their own reverse transcriptase, and they will copy themselves and insert themselves all over the genome. In the case of humans, the ALU sequence repeat is about 300 base pairs long, but it's copied over a million times in the human genome, and that will um, ends up compromising about 11% of our total uh, base pairs. 
So of the 3.1 billion base pairs um, in the human genome, 11% of those, so uh, 320 million about base pairs are these ALU repeats. Um, L1 is another really common uh, retrotransposon in the human genome, and that accounts for 17% of the human genome. So these are not without consequence um, in the human genome. Here is a H5P question for you.